Hey, it's Mark with The Thoughtful Gamer, and I'm here with another three impressions, three questions. This is our first impressions format where I go over three impressions of a game I've recently played and three questions that I will be thinking about as I play it again. Before I get started, as a reminder, please subscribe to this YouTube channel, and uh, if you'd like to support what I do, you can go to patreon.com slash thethoughtfulgamer. Today I'm going to be talking about the Tales from the Loop board game. As I understand it, this is based on an RPG system uh, that has a good amount of material for it, but this is the board game version. I'm not familiar with the RPG at all, uh, so I can't help there, but I will say the setting is pretty cool. It's kind of a 1980s Stranger Things-esque uh, vibe with mechs, which are always fun. But let's get into the impressions. The first impression I had of this game is that it looks beautiful. It's got one of the best maps I have seen in quite a while. The art is fantastic. It's got these really cool minis that you can see there. There's one of them of one of the mechs. Here's another mech right here. That looks pretty good. I'm not a mini aficionado, but they look pretty good to me. More exciting is the character art is really awesome. I particularly like this person, the weirdo. They have a pet crow. It's cool. And they got all, all the 80s high school stereotypes. There's a jock character. There's a nerd character, et cetera, et cetera. And the art design on it is, is just great. It's really, really well done. My second impression is that the rule book is a bit cumbersome. It's quite large, uh, probably between 20 and 30 pages long, and boy, is it wordy. I haven't had this much trouble with a rule book since, I don't know, Imperial Struggle maybe, but this is probably more dense than Imperial Struggle. And I don't even know if the rule set is that complicated because it's largely centered around a couple of base systems, but there are so many little details and exceptions that make a relatively simple system of just rolling some dice, like modifying the number of dice you have rolling and getting a success if you roll a six. There's so much around it that I had to go back to the rule book all the time during our play. It probably doubled the length of our game. The third impression I got from Tales from the Loop is that Amber and I got locked down on all these negative status conditions. So if you look at the player board here, there's a couple of statuses. You can be grounded, you can be exhausted, uh, I forget the others, uh, upset or scared or injured. Um, and then there's this favor track and a lot of the punishment in the game, the things that slow you down, give you these statuses, and they're kind of annoying to get rid of. They're not quite lose a turn type things, but they are they almost feel like that. I remember at one point, both Amber and I were so locked down with these negative status effects that we did have to effectively lose a turn. Uh, the, the game is split up into a couple of weeks, and each round is a day of that week. And one of the days, we just had to stay at home and do nothing just to get rid of these negative status effects. And it kind of brought the game down to a halt, uh, which I don't know if that's the intended experience. I, I doubt it is because we didn't. we certainly did not win. We did not succeed in this cooperative game. Uh, mostly because we kept getting these negative status effects. And it's one of those things that they compound, right? The statuses make it more difficult to succeed on checks that you're trying to do, of, of things that you're trying to accomplish to advance the story and advance the game. But once you get them, it becomes harder to get those checks, and then the penalty for failure is often more negative status effects. So it became the snowball thing. So now let's look at the three questions that I'll be thinking about as I play this game more. The first one is, can we avoid trouble? Can we avoid this lockdown thing where we, we get stuck in this negative feedback loop of not being able to succeed on checks, uh, but not being able to avoid doing checks? I mean, one of them is essentially mandated each day of or each round of the game. Can we avoid that negative feedback loop? I assume we can, since it seems necessary to win the game, and I assume the game is winnable. Uh, but how are we going to be able to do that? Are we? Did we just play too boldly and 
risk too many things. I don't know. It didn't seem like we were. It seemed like we just failed a couple of checks that were in our favor. You know, the odds played out uh, against us a little bit, and then it just snowballed from there. So can we avoid trouble in the future is the first question. The second one is how good are the stories in this game? We didn't get to experience much of a story in our first play because we got stuck and then just failed. <laughs> but the the game is set up with this really interesting system where you don't actually know what your win condition is at the start of the game. You're playing as these high school kids, there's these mechs in our game which was I believe the recommended starting one. There was something going on with the mechs where they were going out of control. They were like spreading a virus between them, which was cool, but I didn't get to experience a lot of that story, and I, w I was really curious to see how it played out. So there are a number of different scenarios, and each one of them has a couple of decks of cards associated with it that tell the story as you accomplish goals. They outline different objectives for you, and the game's kind of about balancing the story element versus your obligations as a high schooler of like getting home on time uh, which again is really neat if it works I'm not sure how well it works there and my final question is can we speed up the game again we sp I spent a lot of time looking at the rule book trying to clarify things I made a couple of ad hoc rules decisions maybe they were incorrect but uh, you know the next couple of games I'm going to be buried in the rule book a lot once I get out of that, I should be able to speed up the game. But even then, the pace of the game seemed a little bit sluggish for what I would want a story game to give me. In that, it was a lot of what felt like very menial, incremental things. And a lot of things to consider. A lot of these status effects or getting specific items. One rule we didn't know is whether or not you get an item at random or if you search for it through the deck. I gotta figure that one out. Uh, but can we speed up the game where it's more manageable? I think in this first game, we lost about halfway through. I believe we were just through the first of two weeks, and we were probably there for two hours. Again, it's a first-time play. I would look through a lot of stuff for the rulebook, but I would really like a story game like this that doesn't have a lot of really complex decision making it's a lot of push your luck and skill checks and those rpg elements i would like it to play much quicker and i'm not sure if tales for the loop is going to do that but it's something i'll be looking out for so there's my first three impressions and three questions about the tales from the loop board game i'll have a written review of it up at some point i just gotta play it some more um it does look really really beautiful so i hope it ends up being a great game but at this point i don't know it, it seems like a lot of effort for getting stuck grounded at home and injured and scared and all of that stuff that happened to me but it could just be that i played very poorly that is entirely possible Thanks for watching, everybody. You can find everything I do at thethoughtfulgamer.com. I would like to remind you again, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm not quite to the point where I can monetize and actually get money off of my YouTube stuff. But if you would like to support me through the avenue that I have open right now, you can go to patreon.com slash thethoughtfulgamer. Thanks for watching.